everyone. Uh, today we'll be talking about how to read in a process. My name is Dr. Sandy Gompayan from the Department of Oral and Acquisition Surgery. So, uh, osteonecrosis is a term that is divided into the Greek word osteon meaning bone, necros meaning dead, and osteos meaning condition. This was uh, described by Regard in 1920. Osteoradi necrosis is also known by various other terms like post radiation osteonecrosis, radiation of status, radio osteonecrosis, radiation osteomyelitis, uh, radio osteomyelitis, etc. So, the serious uh, debilitating deforming potential complication of radiation therapy following uh, cancer surgery. Various definitions have been given by various authors. The most commonly used one is Marx, uh, who gave it in 1938. He described it as an area of uh, area greater than one centimeter of exposed bone in the field of the radiation that has failed to show any evidence of healing for at least six months. And into the etiology, uh, doses above 60 gray are usually required to cause the irreversible damage. Before uh, 1960, we used to use ortho voltage, and now currently we use uh, mega voltage. And along with this, we use various uh, bone sparing techniques so that uh, the adjacent tissues are less irradiated and the damage caused to the adjacent tissues is less. So, the various techniques that we use for this is the dose fractionation, we dec uh, decrease the use. Uh, decrease the dose and uh, meticulous collimation use uh, shielding of normal tissue and thus maintenance of free radiation, post radiation, gentle health. So, all of this has uh, decreased the incidence of osteoarthritis necrosis to uh, 2 to 5 percent, incidence to 2 to 5 percent. Dental extractions and trauma are uh, the major cause uh, for uh, osteoarthritis necrosis after radiation therapy. Coming to the pathophysiology, uh, the exact cause of osteoarthritis necrosis is not known till date. Three theories have been put forward since 1970. These were given by Mayers, Marx, and Delinian. So uh, we'll briefly look into these theories. We don't know the exact cause uh, till date. Uh, Mayer gave uh, his uh, radiation trauma and infection theory uh, in 1970. He stated that trauma provided the portal for remission by oral microbial flora into the underlying irradiated bone. So, uh, this trauma resulted in uh, infection. Uh, Marx's hypoxic hypocellular and hypovascular theory, he stated that radiation uh, formed hypoxic hypocellular and hypovascular tissue. This resulted in uh, cellular death and breakdown of collagen and this resulted in, uh, in turn resulted in a uh, chronic non healing wound. Delanian, uh, this is the most uh, accepted and most recently uh, given theory. So he uh, put forward the fibrotrophic theory. He said that uh, the fibroblasts and osteoblasts they undergo uh, radiation damage before the endothelial cell. So, uh, this results in dysregulation of collagen uh, metabolism, thus damage to the DNA of bone cell, uh, and this bone necrosis results in this in turn results in uh, fragile and abnormal uh, uh, tissues, abnormal myofibroblasts, uh, forming fibrosis and trauma. Or all of this uh, to these abnormal tissues leads to osteoarthritis in the process. So, uh, coming to the classification, classification was given by Marx in 1938 based on the period and occurrence, occurrence of osteoradina process. He described it into three types, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 1 develops shortly after radiation due to synergistic effects of surgical trauma and radiation injury. Type 2 is usually seen between, uh, occurs rarely occurs before two years. It is usually seen after, after six years due to the progressive end arthritis and vascular effusion. Type 3 occurs uh, between 6 months and 3 years of radiation due to cellular damage in them. And so the type of osteonecrosis is uh, osteonecrosis that uh, occurs spontaneously that is 30% in 30% of cases. That is, the degradative function exceeds new bone production. Trauma induced osteoradionecrosis that is, the repetitive capacity of bone is insufficient to overcome an infection. 
So uh, bone injury can occur uh, through direct trauma. The uh, tooth extraction is the main cause that is 84% of the cases. Elite cancer surgery or biopsy or seeing the gel rotation or uh, this uh, uh, length of tissue that is necrosed and the skin you know, lead to internally to uh, bony necrosis. Uh, clinical features mainly include pain, there's evidence of exposed bone, usually the patient may have Christmas halitosis, there's elevated temperature present. Although uh, acute infection is usually not present, exposed bone with a gray or yellow color is seen in association with intraoral or extraoral fistula. So, and uh, you can maybe see pathological fractures also. The most commonly affected sites are uh, the affected site is the mandible because of the more cortical bone that has more less vascular vascularity. It's also uh, reported in maxilla, temporal bone, three node bone, and basal skull. So, in the mandible, 62% of the cases are seen in the body of mandible, 13% in the anterior mandible, and 2% in the maxilla, and 1% is seen in the mandible condyle and coronal process. The range of mandibular fundamental coronal process. Uh, maxilla is not, as I've mentioned all earlier, maxilla is not commonly affected because of uh, absence of dense cortical plates and there's more extensive vascular network on the maxilla. Radiographic findings initially, there won't be much uh, radiographic changes. Uh, later stages, you can see in defined radiolucent areas of cortical refraction with our secret station. Uh, you can see in the radiograph on the left hand, left hand side. Coming to the management of post radio necrosis, uh, initial treatment is control of infection if at all it is present. Uh, you can gently irrigate the soft tissues and uh, remove any debris that is present, decrease inflammation. Pulsating low pressure irrigating devices uh, these are available in the mass market. These can be used. Uh, supporting measures, uh, you can use uh, fluid, uh, liquids, and liquid diet. And diet that is high in proteins can be given, and vitamins also can be given. Pain control measures can be used. Ultrasound therapy uh, or non terminal effects, and it, uh, it can also induce angiogenesis. You can divide the tissues, hysterectomy. You can give hyperbaric oxygen therapy. and then uh, resection and resection and reconstruction. This, uh, if none of this works, you, you go for resection and this reconstruction of the tissue. So uh, the treatment of osteoradial necrosis is mainly aimed at uh, removal of the necrotic bone and enhancement of vascularity of the remaining radiation damaged tissues. So uh, while you are extracting a patient that has undergone radiation therapy, there are a few things that you can keep in mind to avoid uh, a lot of damage to those tissues. So you should avoid uh, raising the gingival flap whenever possible, uh, thereby avoiding injury for the periosteum. And, you know, blood flow is already decreased and then you don't end up damaging the uh, vascularity further. Avoid reducing alveolar bone whenever possible. But if at all there is a bony spicule present, you'll have to remove all of that so that you don't cause any side rotation to the tissue. Uh, following extraction, you should uh, extraction, you should uh, curate the tissue, irrigate, uh, remove any debris that is present so that you know doesn't go for further infection. Uh, then you can follow up the patient regularly uh, after two weeks and later, maybe one month later. To see how the healing was. So, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is given to a patient uh, so as to uh, increase his oxygen, uh, increase the oxygen that uh, reaches his tissues. So, it consists of 100% oxygen administration at more than one absolute pressure, uh, one absolute atmospheric pressure. It is given either in a monoplace or a multiplace unit. The picture that you see on the right is a monoplace unit that is a single chamber where uh, only one patient is treated. And on the left side, it is a multiplace unit where multiple patients can be treated at a uh, large room. The mechanism of action include uh, so uh, 
after radiation therapy, there is occlusion of blood flow and the blood flow is compromised in the blood vessels that you can see in the left hand side, the corner uh, picture, last uh, lower picture. Uh, so when you give 100% uh, oxygen under pressure, it results in new blood vessel formation as well as the plasma can carry 100% oxygen under pressure. So this results in more oxygen delivery to the uh, necrosed tissues. So method of delivery, uh, HPO is administered in a place called hyperbaric chamber. It can be monoplase or multiplase as I showed, showed you in the picture before. So uh, each session ranges from 90 to 120 minutes where the patient breathes 100% oxygen at 2.4 atmospheric uh, pressure and each session is termed as a dive. So a total of 20 to 30 dives spanning five, weeks, uh, uh, five days a week is planned uh, pre-operatively. So uh, treatment, we follow Marx's protocol now. He gave this protocol in 1983. And this is based on the treatment site specific response to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So he gave, uh, he mentioned three stages, that is stage one, stage two, and stage three. And stage three are that is with reconstruction. So a total of 30 uh, hyperbaric oxygen exposure at 2.4 absolute atmospheric pressure for 90 minutes. In the multiplace chamber or two atmospheric pressure for 20 minutes in the monoplace chamber is given. The wound is examined for signs of improvement such as mucosal cover, uh, resorption of non viable bone, or a decrease in size of exposure. Uh, if the patient uh, shows significant improvement with this treatment, he is uh, labeled as a stage one responder. If he doesn't respond to this treatment, he is uh, treated by stage two protocol. So in stage two protocol, you uh, remove the necrotic bone, there is debride, you uh, debride the tissues, you can, uh, you can uh, remove the sequestrum, so, and you can attempt a primary closure of the mucosa. With post of healing, an additional 10 session of HPO exposure is given. And still, if there is dehiscence of tissue and bone exposure, then you go into th uh, stage three protocol. So stage three is a section of the mandible. You remove the entire section of the mandible of the necrotic segment until bone margin, that is, until you notice bleeding, you section till there. And then uh, if there is any or of cutaneous fistula that is present, you remove the fistula fat and the uh, involved skin and then you uh, close the wound. Stabilization of the segment can be either given by external pins or you can use maxillary mandibular fixation IMF. And then an additional uh, HPA therapy consisting of 30 dives is given to the patient. And uh, the reconstruction stage is done after 10 weeks. So uh, before reconstruction, an additional 20 dives of oxygen HPO therapy is given and 10 dives post op is also given. So recently, uh, newer drugs have been found out, uh, like uh, pentoxifilin, tocopril, tocopril is nothing but vitamin E, it's an antioxidant, fat soluble vitamin. So these has been proved to help in uh, further increasing the oxygen supply to the tissues. So pentoxifilin and its metabolite, uh, metabolites improve the oxygen blood flow by decreasing its viscosity and tissue oxygen levels have been shown to increase significantly. Usual dosage is 400 mg DID uh, with meals. Uh, does, you can see uh, significant improvement in two to four weeks, and it is recommended to continue for at least eight weeks. Tocopherol is a fat soluble vitamin. Uh, they say uh, serve as scavengers for active oxygen species that is generated by oxidative, oxidative stress. Uh, so, uh, by protecting the cell membrane and thereby preventing fibrosis. So this also uh, helps in so the, the tissue doesn't go into fibrosis formation. And the dosage is 100 uh, international units per day. So we have uh, covered the treatment that that we do now, like the treatment that uh, the current protocol. So now we'll go into prevention. How do you prevent osteoarthritis necrosis? So um, Keeper and Meyer uh, recommendation is what we follow. Uh, they gave it in 1950, Keeper, he gave it in 1950, and Meyer in 1958. 
the mob should be made uh, as clean as possible but uh, possible by scaling and irrigation all infections of soft tissue should be eliminated all infected and non vital teeth should be extracted all teeth in the line of irrigation if it, even if it is good or bad it should be extracted all teeth that are periodontally uh, involved should be extracted if the parotid and submandibular gland are to receive heavy irrigation then all the teeth should be extracted if mouth was uh, much neglected that is if the patient doesn't care much he doesn't uh, take care of his oral hygiene it is always better to uh, extract all his teeth the use of antibiotic prophylaxis should uh, before extraction is not warranted but we uh, there's nothing wrong in giving it you can give it if you desire it uh, the uh, patient should be thoroughly inspected in the maintenance of absolute uh, hygiene care of home he should be given proper oral hygiene instruction that is very important a neglect of his oral hygiene can cause serious problems and can lead to uh obscurity in the process of uh the remaining tissue the re remaining tooth he, he doesn't care for his remaining tooth so that should that is very important and he should be given proper oral hygiene infection uh fluoride therapy should be used to prevent radiation carries in any of the remaining teeth If possible, the radi uh, radiation therapy should start only twenty-one days, that is, in uh, uh, three weeks after extraction. Coming to the conclusion, uh, previously uh, the treatment modality was SCA therapy, ciprofloxacin, or antibiotic. Now these newer drugs that have been introduced, like ofarolans, pentoxifilin, has uh, shown very a uh, very good effect it is effective in resolving osteoarthritis in a process and gives soft tissue growth over the denuded bone by reversing the process of osteoarthritis in a process thank you for your patient listening thank you